Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you've ever wanted to try out All Star, which is an extremely popular network of analog nodes, then one thing that may put you off, and that's there's no real off the shelf fully completed products. Well, apart from the likes of G7 RPG, who makes fantastic nodes fully built and set up. There are other fully built nodes made by other hobbyists, but what I will show you in this video will help you learn more about All Star as you build the node yourself. An All Star node normally consists of three main items, a Raspberry Pi or a Linux based computer, which then runs the software, a specific type of USB sound card, and of course a radio which transmits and receives. If you can get past the Linux setup, but don't want to modify a USB sound card and then attach a radio, you can use one of these instead. Now I purchased this directly from AliExpress as I'd seen it around for a while and fancied trying one. Now it works extremely similar to the popular Shari Pi Hat, which incidentally I do have a video on this channel if you want to go and check it out. Now this little device has two USB ports which plug directly into the USB ports on a Raspberry Pi, just like this. Now the USB ports have been placed in such a way that they fit directly into the USB ports of the Pi, and this version is a Pi version 3B. If we take the main board out of the metal case, we can see it has an onboard All-Star compatible sound card. It also has an onboard radio in the form of one of those nice RF SA818S modules, similar to what I featured in a previous video. There's a single antenna connection in the form of an SMA socket on the top right. Now this is where you can attach the included antenna. Although personally, I'll be using another antenna because the one I received made this kind of weird sound and I don't really trust it. Down the right hand side, there are also four status LEDs which cover power, comms, cos and PTT. The RF module is stated to have an RF output from 500 milliwatts up to one watt, but we'll measure the output power in another video. Now you also notice on the board a placeholder for where you could install a jumper, which again, according to the specifications, will allow you to choose either high or low power. Now to be fair, this board seems to be well designed and laid out in quite a neat fashion. Now later in the video, we'll test this on there and hopefully make a contact through the All Star network. Okay, so let's take a look from the start how we'll get this working and set up as an All Star node. Now, the first thing you need to do is register on the All Star Link website. Now, that's assuming you want to use your node as part of the ham radio network. Of course, you can use this in a private network, but this video will only cover using it as a ham radio integrated node. But once you've registered on the All Star Link website, you'll be provided with a node number and a password. Make sure to write these down as you will need them later. Next, we need to program the receive and transmit frequency on the radio board. So you will need to head over to this GitHub page and either download the Python script if you want to edit the frequency using the Pi itself, or you can download a Windows utility and connect the device to a Windows computer first which is actually what I did. So I just connected the COM port from the device to a Windows computer and then run the Windows application. You can check which COM port within Device Manager. Select the COM port, press open, and then just change the TX and RX frequencies to the ones that you need. Basically, this is the frequency that you need to set another radio to to be able to talk to the node. Now you can also set up CTCSS so that the node will only receive transmissions with the CTCSS tone set. Now I wasn't sure which one of these right buttons were needed, so I just kind of pressed both and it seemed to program that SA818 module just fine. Now once programmed, just unplug it from your computer. Next, we'll download the Ham VoIP Raspberry Pi image from the Ham VoIP website. Now this is essentially a Pi operating system with all start all set up and installed with some minimal configuration of the boot up. Once downloaded, I use an application called Balan Etcher to write the downloaded ham VoIP image to an SD card. Now the SD card size that I used was 32 gigabytes. 
Once the SD card has been written, it's now time to insert the SD card into the Pi and then plug in the interface, just like this. Now I would recommend to use a decent power supply for the Pi, one which is rated for use with a natural Raspberry Pi, as it will provide enough current. I would also recommend to plug in an Ethernet connection to the Pi so that we can SSH into the Pi and make the required setup steps. Now once the Pi is all booted, you should be able to locate the IP address of the Pi by using your home router's device list. Using a free application called Putty, I can now connect to the Pi using the IP address and port 222. Note that the default SSH port is actually 22, but this particular image has been changed to port 222. Once connected, you'll need to enter the username and password to gain access to the terminal. Now this image has been set to root and root. Of course, you can change this once you are logged in if you need to. Once logged in, you'll be presented with a setup script. Now I would recommend to select yes on this first screen as this will download the latest updates and make sure all of the files are up to date. Now once updated, the Pi will reboot, so just log in again and this time select no for the update. Select yes to run in the first setup and then enter a new root password. This is the password to access the Pi over SSH. Select no on the private node check so that your node is part of the network. Now enter your node number that you was assigned when you registered on the All Star Link website. Some of the following steps you'll need to read and decide if you want them enabled or not. You'll then be asked to enter a call sign for the node. Now make sure you enter the call sign you used when registering the node on the All Star Link website. The next step will ask you if you want to report your node status to the All-Star network. Now, personally, I chose yes here. For the duplex settings, I chose option one. Now, the next option is where we enter our All-Star password, which would have been given to you when you registered your node on the All-Star link website. So enter that here and then just press OK. Next option, I chose no. And then on the simple USB setup, I chose yes. From the list, I chose default, which is option seven. On the EEPROM setting, I chose no. And on the audio boost setting, I also chose no, but you can change this later on if you need to. Carrier detection setting, I chose yes. And COS inverted, also I selected as yes. CTCSS decoding, I set to no. And PTT setting, I also chose no. PL filter, I chose yes. And D and pre-emphasis setting, I chose no. Again, you can change these settings later if you need to. RX audio delay, I left at default, which was zero. And audio level settings, I chose no. But again, you can enter the simple USB tune settings later on if you find the audio levels from and to the radio are too loud or too quiet. In fact, with just the default settings, I had good reports that my audio sounded okay, so I didn't think I needed to adjust anything. The last option is to save the setting and restart asterisk. Now once it's restarted, we now need to configure a web application called Supermon, as we will need some way of telling the node what to connect to. Using PuTTY again, we need to enter into the forward slash etc forward slash asterisk folder and then edit a file called manager.conf. So just type nano space manager.conf. Now the file will load up and you'll need to make some minor changes here. First, remove the character that's in front of the web enabled setting then scroll down until you see the admin stanza. Now where it says secret, you need to enter a password after the equals character. Now this password can be anything, but just remember it. You can now press Ctrl X and then Y to save the file. We now need to restart Asterisk using this command. Now we need to change directory into the Supermon folder and then edit a file called allmon.ini. Change one of these node entries to your node number that you was given at the time of registration on the All Star Link website. You then also need to enter the password on the password line. 
Now this is the same password you just set in the manager.conf file. Now as before, save the file. Now one last thing to do is to create a username and password for the web server. So use this line like this. The admin on the end of this line is the admin username that we set in the manager.conf and the allmon.any file. So if you didn't edit that, then it will be admin. Enter a password using the same that we set in the two previous files. Now, if you now open up a web browser on a computer that's on the same network as the node and type the IP address of the node followed by forward slash supermon, you should see a screen like this. You can click on the login link at the top and then enter the admin username and password that you just set up. Once logged in, you now have control over your node. Now entering a node number in the box and then pressing connect, you should connect to that node. So all that's left to do is to grab a radio like a handheld radio and set it to the same frequency that you set in the SA818 module. In fact, if you reboot the node, you should hear a transmission at boot up that voice IDs the node and it even says the IP address of the node. Don't forget if you did set up a CTCSS tone while programming the radio module, then you'll also need that CTCSS tone set in the radio. Now an echo test server set up by the Hubnet team has a node number of 40894. So if we connect to that and then transmit a voice message, it should then get sent back to the node and then rebroadcast out on that set frequency. Node 40894 connected to node 47719. This is uh, M0DQW just testing, testing, testing audio on uh, Hubnet on a Hubnet audio test server. This is uh, M0DQW testing, testing one, two, three, four, five, over. Playback. This is uh, M0DQW just testing, testing, testing audio on a uh, Hubnet, on a uh, Hubnet audio test server. This is uh, M0DQW testing, testing one, two, three, four, five, over. M0DQW. Well, that works pretty well. So next to have a QSO, and that's exactly what I did on the Hubnet node network. Yeah, hi Matt. Uh, yeah, pretty cool, pretty good actually. Um, you don't sound as uh, as good as you normally do. <laughs> My ears are quite tuned listening to your voice in uh, hi-fi sounds, but. Um, Great work on uh, on uh, all the stuff that you do. Yeah, G seven RPG M zero DQWR. Thanks very much for the compliments, mate. Much appreciated. Yeah, I guess uh, we're kind of limited on bandwidth on this, aren't we? <laughs> um, I guess uh, I guess you kind of realised that I was connected. You, you must be monitoring what nodes are connected. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just I'm working on a video at the moment, actually. Um, of one of these kind of Shari Pi clone boards. M zero D Q W G seven RPG. Um, right, yeah, no, I, I wasn't uh, stalking you or anything like that. I just happened to glance over at the uh, the Hubnet monitor screen. Now the version of Supermon that's installed as default with the hand VoIP image is a bit of an older version, but you can upgrade to Supermon version two. There's a link on the Hanvoip website on instructions on how you do that. One, it looks a lot nicer. Two, it works properly. And three, you have a lot more control over the node just via the web browser. Another way of controlling your all-star node, and this will work with literally any all-star node, is by using an application on your mobile device called Node Remote. This is an application that I actually made myself for personal use, but once it was shared with a few people, it was obvious that it would be useful for others. So I created an iOS version and an Android version, both of which you can find in the appropriate app stores. Anyway, guys, I'll leave a link down in the description below where I purchased the USB node interface from if you want to go and check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.